it's a film thing fans Russell here with a special guest host this week to talk about how to create convincing looking sci-fi on a low budget our question today came from Salvador Canalizo who writes hey Russ hope you're having a great day I am so far so far I'm about to start filming a sci-fi short film for school next week. It includes some outer space action and a good amount of the screenplay takes place inside the spaceship. Any tips on how we can achieve the sci-fi look without overdoing it and on a tight budget? You know, I've actually never done a sci-fi movie before. I've done a lot of short films, never really a sci-fi one unless I'm forgetting something. But when I read this question, the first thing that came to mind was a channel that was one of my favorites that I discovered during my time with Indie Mogul, Apsis Motion Pictures. They've done a great deal of sci-fi work and do a lot of great virtual set work on a low budget. So I reached out to Apsis's Joel Lucas to find out what advice he had to achieve that sci-fi look when you got very little money to work with, if any at all. Joel, take it away. Hey, everybody. Quick aside, apparently Russell and I have like the exact same desk and wall colors in our editing suite. I promise we are nowhere near each other. This is not like the same room that we just... Anywho. So you want to make some fancy sci-fi sets on a tight budget. I feel your pain. So building a convincing sci-fi set is a very complicated uh, endeavor and it's costly and you know for all these reasons um, people on small budgets tend to do virtual sets. There are a lot of tutorials, a lot of resources out there online for showing you how to do green screening and compositing and color correction. So what I'm going to focus on here is more a philosophical approach, something that's gonna make your life simpler for you if this is your first time doing these sorts of effects. Conceptual. Plan to make it easy for yourself. You know, I know you have these delusions of grandeur, you're gonna make this opus and everybody's gonna love it, but you're just starting out. Don't try to do too much in one film, in your first film or your first visual effects heavy film. You wanna rein in the scope, you wanna concept the piece, so you have only a couple characters or a couple of sets. You don't want to be dealing with too much at once. It's also good for your audience because you don't want to overwhelm them. You don't want to expose them to too much of this world at once. So the scope, reigning in the scope, is going to make it easier for you. And it's also going to make your story more compelling if you do it right. And the other thing is that visual effects get harder to maintain over time. You know, that's the reason that people pay like 15 bucks a ticket to go and see Gravity in 3D is because those long shots are like a huge effort. It's a big set piece to do that. And again, if you're just starting out, there's no shame in breaking down your sequence into easily managed shots. Storyboarding, you need to do this. And use it as an opportunity to limit the number of angles that you're gonna have to produce for each sequence. If you have to produce five, six, seven different angles for a particular scene, that's much harder than if you have three. You know, two characters talking to each other and you have a close-up of each and a wide. If you plan those shots carefully and storyboard them so that you can do them artistically and put things that are interesting up on the screen in just a couple of shots, then that's fewer backgrounds that you'll have to generate further on down the road. It's also easy to fall into a rut if you haven't storyboarded. Because you're sitting there, you got your green screen set up, you got your lights up, and you have the camera there. It's easy to fall into a rut where you're shooting almost the same stuff all the time. Storyboarding, when you're not on the set, gives you the opportunity to mix it up a little. Asset search. You're gonna wanna do this before you shoot. When you're writing, while you're writing, you get got those creative juices flowing, you wanna go and look for assets because you don't wanna produce things that you don't need to. There are a lot of resources out there like Renderosity, Daz 3D, Turbo Squid, where you can find low cost or even free assets. And trust me, if you can throw out 20 or 30 bucks on a virtual set that'll function for your narrative, you will much rather do that at this stage than do something custom. The amount of effort just in producing something like that. You can just license one of these pieces and bam, it's production ready, ready to go. You just wanna make sure that you get an asset that's compatible with whatever programs you're using. You're shooting green screen, presumably. You're gonna want a lot of light. The name of the game here is to avoid shadows on your screen. Get a lot of light on that screen, light your subjects separately. You don't want the same lights on your subject and on your screen. That'll just make it a little easier for you to pop them off that background when you're in composite. And you know what makes keying hard? Hair. 
Hair makes keying very hard. It's the, one of the hardest things to deal with because it, gets, it moves around a lot. It's, it's kind of partially transparent. You can make things easier on yourself if you design your costumes or you cast your actors around avoiding the hair issues. You know, if you put some blonde with really frizzy hair in there, you're gonna have a much harder time keying that than if you just have her tie her hair back. Or if you have a guy, you just put him in a helmet. Or if you cast a bald actor. All of these things will make your life way easier when you're doing your composites. Now obviously, if you're a little more seasoned at keying, you know, you might want to experiment more and like you might purposefully have someone have crazier hair because it's more difficult. I can't stress this enough. There's a tendency for younger filmmakers to be really excited about whatever set pieces that they have going on in their film, that they try to like work on those effects as soon as they get them in there. Don't do that. Don't get ahead of yourself. What you want to do is lock your edit. You want to you want to finish editing your film. Get some sort of time lock, some sort of picture lock where you know that your in and out points on each of your clips are basically what it's going to be in your final. Then start your effects. You do not want to be doing visual effects for footage that is not going to make your final. It's a waste of your processing power, it's a waste of render time. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. So, you've got your edit locked. Now it's time to do the visual effects. The best way to go about this is to compartmentalize each stage. So you get your edit and you get to look and see that shot one and three and seven and 10 are all the same angle. So you can separate those out, put them all on their own track. And that way when you're doing your post, you do similar shots together. And that's gonna reduce the amount of work that you have to do because you're not starting from scratch for each one. So you just do them in batches like that. So you bring one, the first group of shots in, do all your keys for all of them, all at once. So they're gonna be similar. You might need to tweak them in between shots, but the idea is that the settings are gonna be close. Then you put your backgrounds in, and then do any color correction or additional effects that you need to do. So by doing this, you're able to do each stage in a more clean and consistent manner. So again, a, a lot of this is aimed directly at beginners. And as you get more comfortable with these basic visual effects scenarios, you'll get ideas about how you might push the, your envelope further out. I encourage you to do that. Thanks, Joel. And if my high praise for their channel didn't come across enough at the beginning of the video, I love this channel. Check it out. Subscribe to them. And you know what? Uh, at the bottom today, the three videos we're going to link to are their three most recent works, which look great and really show you what you can accomplish with a very limited budget. See you all next week for the live show, and if you missed this past week's live show, uh, one of the annotations on the screen will link to that as well. But otherwise, see you at Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern.